Hi everyone, I'm Angelina and this is Blueprint DIY where we remake our clothes to be just as unique as us. Today I am doing a requested video because this is something I have just recently learned how to do. I had no idea that my sewing machine could do it and I'm sure there may be many, many of you that don't know that your sewing machine can do this and it is sewing with a twin needle on a regular sewing machine. Yes, all you need is to make sure that you have the twin needle, which you can purchase on Amazon or any sewing store, Joanne Fabrics, any fabric store, as well as you need a plate that doesn't have the little pinhole. So if your uh, plate has a pinhole, I'm sure you may have another plate because most sewing machines don't only come with that plate. They, The standard plate is typically the one that has the open slot. So more than likely, your sewing machine can do this. And if you're interested in upcycling or you want to see more content like this definitely hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you don't miss a thing all right let's get started show you guys this on my brother strong and tough it's the strong and tough st 371 hd but you should like i said at the beginning you should be able to do this pretty much on any machine and the reason i know that is because this machine does not have a particular setting for a twin needle some machines do especially uh computerized machines may have a setting on the side that's specifically for um a twin needle this one doesn't it's no setting i'm just going to have it on two which is the straight stitch all right, so we're gonna start off with two matching threads. You could definitely do this with different colored threads if you choose, that's up to you. But I'm gonna start off with these two same color threads. Now you can start off with a thread and a bobbin, just a bobbin with the matching color if you don't have two of the same color. A lot of you gave me that tip in the last video when I ran out of thread like this much from the end. It's so frustrating. And I promise you, I was so tired, I couldn't think. And when you guys told me that, I was like, Duh. <laughs> but yeah, you can definitely use a bobbin for this um, if you don't have a matching color of that thread. It will be really um, simple to do that. But I just so happen to have two of this color thread, so I'm going to show you in this way. So what you're going to do, and also, of course, I have a bobbin that is a matching thread. So you can see right here is where I would normally thread my normal machine. And for the second thread, where we would wind our bobbin, I have this extra piece here that came with the sewing machine. Now, if your machine didn't come with one of these, then it may definitely be more recommended to use a bobbin instead of another thread. But I, mine did come with this and as well as it came with a twin needle. And that's what gave me this idea like, okay, if it came with a twin needle, then obviously it can use it. I've never done this on a sewing machine before. Let me see what this is all about. And that's how I discovered it. But this extra piece on the Brother Strong and Tough um, just goes on top of your bobbin winder in order to hold a whole spool of thread. And I'm going to put the spool cap on this one. We're first gonna go ahead and thread this one just like normal. So most sewing machines, they thread very similarly. Um, you know, nothing special, nothing extra about this one that is not like every other sewing machine in the world. When you get to the bottom where the thread goes behind the little lever back there. You're going to put it behind just like normal. Then you're going to put this thread on the left side and your needle threader will not work on this. It just goes in between the two needles. So then with your second thread, you're going to take it from the top and you're going to thread it exactly the same way through the same loops and everything goes through up there behind and when you bring it down the only difference is this side you don't take through the little metal piece that holds the thread right by the needle you just take it right through the needle you pull them both to the back then i'm going to put in my bobbin like normal and put the bobbin cover on then we'll go ahead and lower the needle and the bobbin thread comes up just like normal then I'm gonna put them all to the back just like I would normally do. And we can start sewing, easy peasy. Now one thing that I did notice about the Brother Strong and Tough, and this is just normal, regular, when I'm sewing on a normal, regular basis with one thread, the thread does not like to stay behind this little metal piece down by the needle. 
when you're sewing with two threads, it still does not <laughs> like to stay behind, but it does not affect the quality of the stitches at all. Um, I just continue to sew and I haven't had an issue so far. So if you see that, don't be alarmed. It, um, it should work out pretty well, but um, that is the way the manual says to do it. It says to put one thread behind and the other one just leave in front. So I told you guys the way, you know, the manual said, but I will let you know that it should work both ways. All right, so let's do a little bit of sewing with it. All right, so I have some t-shirt scraps here. I am just going to put that in like normal and just begin to sew. And that's what it looks like on the front. And this is what they'll look like on the back. And let me say that the reason for these stitches, some people might be like, well, why? Why other than decoration would you need that? One of the biggest reasons for these stitches is that it keeps the stitch stretchy. So like if you're sewing on t-shirt material like this, um, then you'll need those stitches to stay stretchy if you're doing a hem. So this was a, is a cut up t-shirt and you'll notice that it already had two stitches to begin with from the store and the store is exactly the same way let me move these threads so you can see it coming from the store it's only slightly different so you'll be able to do the hem on your sleeves of a t-shirt or the hem at the bottom of the t-shirt pretty much exactly the way they're done in the store that stitch will stay nice and stretchy but it will look really good and finished on the front of the garment so yes i think this is a game changer something you can do on just a regular <laughs> sewing machine so yes definitely go get yourself a twin needle and you know if you at all do anything stretchy or decorative um i think it's just really something good to have let me try it with another bobbin see that's not pulling as good as the we're gonna try it, but I noticed that it's not it's not pulling as well. So it may affect the look of the stitch. Okay, that's definitely not as good. Ooh, and jacked up on the back. Okay, so I'm glad I tried that. So let's look at that. You can see the difference because it's the one with the blue thread on it. That's how it looks on the front. You can definitely see some skip stitches on the blue side and it just doesn't look as good on the green side. And then this is what it looks like on the back. Definitely not as good. So let's try a plastic bobbin and see. I had adjusted the stitch length at the beginning, but I didn't do anything to the tension. And so, oh no. That's bad. All right, so that was quite a journey. So I'm so glad I did this video because I've never had an issue with my twin needle stitch before and it's good to have an issue on camera because then I can help you guys. So I turned the camera off, I had to fix it. So this is what the problem that I was having. Ugh, that is so nasty. You can see the first one came out fine. Then we started, um, when we put that other thread in there, that bobbin, it started getting rough because that bobbin was pulling tight. It was not freely pulling like we wanted it to. And that turned out to be the biggest problem. Um, you want that thread to be freely pulling, like you don't want any, like really any tension with that. So let the tension be all, you know, in there, not in the thread. I mean, that's with anything with your sewing machine. If it's pulling too tight, if it gets caught down up in there, it won't make stitches properly. So it was definitely not working here. And so after that, everything I tried just wouldn't work. And so my recommendation would be two things. First of all, I'm gonna tell you what my settings are on. My stitch length is on three and my stitch, like the tension is in between two and three, closer to the two than the three, but that is typically where my attention is, is in between two and three on most of my sewing machines. And this one is just slightly closer to the two than the three, but that seems to work well. But the other thing, even past that, was just one, like I said, making sure that that thread is moving freely. And if it starts to give you hiccups, take the thread out and re-thread it. Um, I think sometimes, because they are threaded together, sometimes they may get tangled up. And with me, it's kind of like a serger. 
when you thread a serger, you have to, when you thread it, you have to pull all the thread out and re-thread it in order. And so this kind of has an order. You want to definitely thread this one first and then this one. And so if you're switching out threads with just this one and then trying to go back and sew like nothing happened, I think it kind of messes up the relationship of where the thread is. And so if you're having that issue, try that. Try taking the thread out and re-threading it, threading this one first and then this one. Um, and see if that works and then of course making sure you don't have any extra tension and then making sure your dials are just right so after I did that I was able to get these completely perfect stitches look just like I was getting before um, when I sewed um, the last on the last couple of videos so I'm super glad I got that figured out because it was giving me some stress but yes I am so happy to have learned about this let me know if it will work for your purposes down in the comment section below and if you haven't subscribed what are you waiting for definitely subscribe and the next review video that you will see from me I will be reviewing three surges I will be reviewing the Singer Heavy Duty Serger as well as the Brother 1034D my tried and true as well as the Juki I don't know the numbers of it I'll put it right here and they're all within the same price range because a lot of times price is what is dictating it for us so uh, what can you get for under $300 in the Serger category so yeah, we're gonna find that out in the next review video. I hope you guys are excited about that. Go watch some other review videos as well as upcycle tutorials, how-to videos, and I will see you guys in the next one. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye.